Hi, this is Vicki Gump with Parnell. And today is 10 5 23 at 3 30 p.m. And I just want to speak a little bit about blessings of God that we have as children of God, meaning those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and are living the life of true repentance. But before we do, I'd like us to pray together. Please pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I ask that this video be put under the barrier of stealth and visibility with no retaliation, Father. No retaliation, no backlash, no interference from the kingdom of darkness, none whatsoever. Father, I ask that you bless this and you send it forth in Jesus' name. Jesus, I ask your word says, whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. I am asking Jesus, you send this out and you anoint it. And Holy Spirit, you take over and, and be my words in my mouth. Anoint this video because I can't do anything without you. But with you, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I stand on that word. Now, Father, I bind every spirit from the dark kingdom that would try to hinder I cancel every spell, every curse. I dismantle every charm. I deprogram the charms, dismantling all the demons inside and commanding them not to do what you are programmed and sent to do in Jesus' name. And then I cancel your assignment. Every spirit that's been signed against, I wrap you in everlasting chains, dipped in the glorified, fortified blood of Jesus. And now I pike you. I set you on fire and throw you into the abyss. Lord, and I pray that they have heavy loads and grievous torment and not be reassigned in Jesus' name. Vengeance is yours. You will take care of it, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know what's just and you know what's fair. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you, you would anoint this, this video and send it out north, south, east, wherever it needs to go. And Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I pray that you would touch the hearts of the people. Open my heart for more understanding. My ears, their ears, my eyes, your eyes, Lord. We have understanding, but we need that understanding opened up further. And I'm asking for that, Father, in Jesus' name. But Lord, we need to encourage ourselves in your word. So I pray that this goes out in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I also cancel every plot, scheme, device, arrow, Father God, every written script, any form of communication in existence of God, because God exists everywhere, that it be canceled from the kingdom of darkness in Jesus' name. And I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. All right. I've been reading, well, I've been reading quite a, quite a different places, but I keep keep going back to Deuteronomy 28 and for those of you that may be well familiar Deuteronomy 28 the first part 1 through 14 is blessings for the children of God and also then after 15 down to 60 well to the end of it is cursings if you are disobedient this is what happens before I go into the blessings of a child of God I first want to give you an understanding of what makes you a child of God. First off, that is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to this earth, born as a baby by virgin birth, a miraculous birth wherein the Holy Spirit inserted Jesus into Mary's womb. It was not some kind of sexual interlude. It was the body of Jesus that God made inserted into Mary. It was a holy thing. And that's how she is a virgin. She, so Jesus was born of a virgin birth. He walked this earth as both God and man, but in the flesh of a man. He went about doing the, king, the Father's business, the, the business of the kingdom of God. Healing. Raising the dead. Casting out demons. Destroying the, the works of the kingdom of darkness. King of darkness, Lucifer, Satan, demons, fallen angels. Jesus did it all. He did everything we needed. Because Father God gave that body he inserted into Mary. That little baby that, womb, that was inserted into her womb. The name above all names. Uh, Philippians 2, 9-11 says he was given a name highly exalted. 
above all others that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. In his other places it talks about his name being exalted. All right, with that being said, well, let's to, to read this other one, so bear with me. Because it talks about, I know I wrote it, Hebrews 1 4. Because, um, to show you that his name is above all things, let's see, Hebrews 1 4. I have my Bible without the tabs. Not here in front of Peter. I'm so sorry. Didn't know he was going to do this. Got to be instant, in season, and out. And just praise the Lord. He is faithful. His Bible here is, uh, doesn't have study notes in this part. So, all right. Hebrews 1 4. And it says, talking about Jesus. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So that way they tell you he's over all the kingdom of darkness. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. That is James 4 7. So he has been we've been given authority through Jesus Christ. But again, Jesus came to this earth, born of a virgin. He was God and man. Half God, half man. He was God and man. Somehow, however that works, only God truly knows. He went about doing the kingdom work. But then he gave his life for us. They didn't kill him. He gave his life. He was whipped, beat, and tortured. He was striped so that you could have healing for the healing of everything you need. Mind, body, soul, spirit. Jesus did the complete work. Trying to find the one where it says, I wrote a bunch of scriptures. No man cometh unto the Father but through Jesus Christ. You cannot get into heaven except through Jesus Christ. I'm going to read some verses about salvation because if you want to go to heaven, you can only do that through Jesus Christ. Of course, John 3 16, the most famous salvation scripture of all. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Acts 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And when I tell you that no man cometh to the Father, but through Jesus Christ, no man can get into heaven. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved. This is what Peter was talking, and it is concerning Jesus. But we have promises. Acts 16.31 And they, they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I stand on that a lot for salvation. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ our Lord Jesus. Romans 10.9 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. When you accept Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, you have to repent of your sins. Sins are those things that are morally wrong, things that are done against 
the law of God, like cheating, stealing, uh, lying, sexual sin, disobedience, rebellion, holding bitterness. All these things are sin, and you have to repent. And if you want to accept Jesus into your heart, you have to do that. True repentance, biblical true repentance. The Greek word in the New Testament is metanoio for repentance, and it means to change one's mind and purpose as a result of after knowledge. It's a changing. The action of repenting, sincere regret or remorse, but biblically, it's also changing one's mind, a wholehearted turning to God, turn from sins to relationship with Jesus Christ. And with that, it also includes, you know, wholeheartedly, you won't want to do these things anymore. You will surrender. You'll, you will you'll love Jesus, and it, he will step in and be everything you need. Okay, in true repentance, it involves a sense of awareness of your guilt. You're going to feel guilty, the sinfulness and helplessness. Example of that would be Psalms 51, where David, after he had sinned with Bathsheba and murdered, had Uriah, her husband, murdered, he repented. Psalm 51 is his repentant prayer. There's also Psalms 109, 21 through 22. True repentance apprehends or takes hold of God's mercy in Jesus Christ. True repentance activates the mercy of God through Jesus Christ. Uh, Psalms 51, 1 and Psalms 130 is an example of that. True repentance means a change of attitude and actions regarding sin. Hatred of sin turns a repentant person away from his or her sin to God. When you get tired of your sinning, you get tired of your life, and you run to Jesus Christ, you're going to come to a point where you'll come to a place to decide whether or not to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You'll get to a point where you're sick of the sin. You're sick of the life that you're living, and you have this empty hole in your heart, and that's Jesus Christ calling out. That's a spot that only God, only Jesus Christ can fit. That's what I call the God spot. True repentance results in a radical and persistent pursuit of holy living, walking with God in obedience to his commands. We find that in 2 Timothy 2, 19-1 and 1 Peter 1, 16. The true repentance means a change of attitude and action regarding sin, hatred of sin. That is Psalms 119, 128. Job 42, 5 through 6, and 2 Corinthians 7 through 10. The whole the, the focus of, of Jesus coming to earth was to call sinners to repentance. I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance, Luke 5 32. His call of absolute surrender goes out to all people. But unless you repent, you too will all will all perish, Luke 13 5. Jesus was all about reaching the lost and saving souls. That was above his healing ministry. That was above everything else. It was reaching the lost. Even when in when Jesus in his spirit, when he was being ascending up from Bethany, that's one of the commands he gave his disciples. Luke twenty four forty seven, in that he commanded that they take the message of repentance. And faith to all nations. True repentance are going to show these signs. Repentance in the Bible involves a complete and irreversible change of mind, heart, soul, body, actions. Repentance recognizes that our sin is offensive to God. To repent means to make an about face, heart directed turn away from self to Jesus Christ. From the past to a future rule by God's command. Acknowledging that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and He came in the flesh. Once you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, I'm going to get read you some of the blessings. And and those of you that's been in this walk for a while, we need to be reminded, encourage yourself. God has given us blessing upon blessing. And for those of you that think that that only the New Testament applies today, I'm going to say this. Why do you think Jesus taught from the Old Testament? He even expounded things from the Old Testament. For example, where he says, Thou shalt not 
He expounded it where thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, for example, thou shalt not covet. He expounded it from just the sin of lust to looking upon a woman with lust in your eyes, you've committed sin already. So the New and Old Testament work hand in hand. The difference is the Old Testament is the Old Covenant. The New Testament, where Jesus came and fulfilled the Old Law and the Old Covenant, is now the covenant of grace. We are saved through Jesus Christ and nothing else. You know, a lot of times I'll say, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I get jumped all the time, even though that's in the Bible. People say, no, 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 you, you can't work your way. No, you cannot. That means when you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, you are doing, being obedient to what he says. You read, you pray, you seek. You do what he tells you to do. You feed the hungry. You, you help the widows indeed. You help the orphan. You do. You work out your own salvation. Your, that means your own personal walk with Jesus Christ. But it's only through grace that you're saved. Grace and mercy that was acquired at the cross. Okay, so some of the blessings that we have, just to encourage us, starting with Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to start in the Old Testament. And it shall come, 1 through 2, I'm going to read it first. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, be obedient, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, too. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. All right, I'm just going to kind of briefly read. Verse, and I'm just going to read these are through 1 through 14, okay? You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You will have blessed fruit of your body, blessed fruit of the ground, blessed increase of your cattle, blessed increase of your kind, kind that's also cows or oxen, blessed flocks of the sheep, bless your basket and, and thy store, blessed coming in, blessed going out. Your enemies shall be smitten before your face. Your enemies shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. These are promises for God's children. Those who accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. Because God does not change. These blessings are for all his children. And the Gentiles, which is the non-Jew, the Gentiles have been engrafted. And they accept Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. So we're adopted into the family. These blessings are for us too. Your storehouses shall be blessed. All you do with your with your hands, God will bless. Your land will be blessed. You will be established in a holy place as a holy people or person unto Himself. All people shall see the blessings of God on your life. All nations shall be afraid of you. He will make your your goods plentiful. You will be blessed with children. Your cattle will be blessed. Your land will be plenteous in in fruit and crops. Bless you with rain. Yeah, bless you with rain. Bless to lend to all nations. Bless to not have to borrow from anyone or anything. Bless to be the head and not the tail. Bless to be above people and not beneath. That right there is just amazing. But you have to walk in obedience. You have to walk in obedience. Now, for those of you that, again, do not like to deal with the Old Testament, here's some in the New Testament. Philippians 4.19. This is a, a promise and a blessing. And my God shall supply every need of yours. My God shall supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Um, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then um, Ephesians 1 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. 1 Peter 4 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. The Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. And their part he is on their part he is evil spoken of. But 
on your part. He is glorified. Now, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are going to have persecution. And a lot of times it will come from your family and those you love. But he's faithful. You, you keep standing for Jesus Christ. I need to read Malachi 3.10. And now there's a lot of people that says you're not supposed to tithe in here. It doesn't say tithing. It does mention tithing two places in the New Testament. So it, it still was in place there. Malachi 3.10. But it has a blessing with it. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out blessings that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So that's, there's many, many, many lessons. We go to just Matthew 5, a sermon on the mount, sometimes called the Beatitude. Verse 1, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came unto him. Verse 2. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, I'm going to read down to verse 15. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that are mourned, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted, persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely, for my name's sake. We've all been there. Rejoice and be... All of us that are true Christians. I mean, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall he be salted? It is therefore good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But on a candlestick and give light unto all in the house. We have to take time and remember whose children we are. We have to take time to rejoice in our salvation. And rejoice in Jesus Christ our Savior and our Heavenly Father. Even rejoice in the Holy Spirit who is our comforter and teacher. John 14 6 tells us he's our comforter and our teacher. Who teaches all things that Jesus said. We need to praise. We need to worship. We need to gather with like Christians. If you can find a good church. If you and one that is being totally led by the Holy Spirit. That does not have all. All the hidden agendas in there. Which is possible. I can't say they're, they're a whole lot. But, the, but God knows exactly who is truly his. Then I recommend you get in there and you praise and you worship and you read and you feed on the word. But you ask Holy Spirit or you ask Jesus Christ to lead you to a God-fearing Holy Ghost field or just one that's that's not all in my Holy Ghost field. But if they're preaching a true word, the true word of God, including salvation, including calling out sins, not tickling your ears, the truth, then by all means... Join that church and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Because we need we need to praise. It says, um, let the worshipers arise in spirit and in truth. We, we have to balance everything. You can't just have the word of God. You also have the, 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 the worshiping and all because spirit and truth. Holy Spirit and truth. You've got to have both sides of it. And it balances because God, God is all these things. Jesus is all these things. And we're told to worship. But I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord Jesus. 
Because even though, I mean, I, I've come in contact and read so many. There's so many people hurting. There's so many people are just being bombarded by attacks. And these are the ones I'm finding out that are truly digging in. Trying to be bride ready, as I say, to be spotless white. Trying to get the sin out of their life. Not caring what the other person thinks anymore. You got to get past what mama thinks. You got to get past what auntie thinks. You got to get past what your sons or your, or your husband think. You've got to get past. And you've got to focus on Jesus Christ. You have got to get in this word. And if you're walking in disobedience and not obedience, then you need to re need, read the rest of um, Deuteronomy. It brings curses upon you. It brings curses upon you. Disobedience is sin. It also opens the door for Satan to come in. If you have unforgiven sin in your heart and in your life, that needs to come out. Jesus is coming. I'm not going to argue with people that says he's not coming. It's not that I done. And I will not argue Bible with you. All I know in my heart is an expectancy and urgency. Each day I look up asking Jesus, is this the day? That's how ready it is. It feels to me how close it is. And he'll say, soon, soon. So remember, if you're being fought on every side and you ground, stuck your feet in and you're doing as you know, according to the word of God, living according to the God, which means you're repenting. I repent often throughout the day because we're in fleshly bodies. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. And I just do that because I do not want to please displease them at all. I do not want to displease them the least little bit. It just, it, it hurts my heart to think I'm displeasing him. So I repent. I read the Bible. I pray. I spend time with him. There are times when I would just sit alone and say, Lord Jesus, Father God, I'm here. If you want to say something here, if not, I'm, I'll just spend this time in your presence because I love you. And I don't always just ask, ask, ask. A lot of times I just come in to be in his presence. It's a love relationship. And he's my everything. He has taken care of me through thick and thin. He has brought food to my table when I've had one can of food. And I said, Amen, and food arrived. He is faithful. You know, I was in a car accident. I feel like I need to share this. It, it, Revelations, I think it's 12, 10, says, And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It's in Revelation 12, definitely. A lot of people think that's just our, our testimony. you know. But we give each other testimonies to encourage. So other people's testimonies helps me overcome, too. So I'm going to share this testimony. When my son was two and a half months old, and my daughter was three, three, anyways, but my son half, my son was in the car. My daughter was in the car with me, but I had a car accident. I passed out. Don't know why I passed out. Never could find out. But I passed out. Went off the side of the mountain. Crushed both my ankles. My left one was pretty much flattened and they told me I would never walk again that didn't sell well with me because I know that Jesus Christ was striped for our healings now granted I was not as close to the Lord as I am now but I knew the word said in Isaiah 53 5 he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And I clung to that. And when that doctor told me, you'll never walk again, I said, you don't know my God. You don't know my God. Well, as most of you know, I'm walking. And, I, and within six months, I had my cast off and was walking. That's the power of Jesus Christ. Now, granted, I'm not saying it wasn't easy the first year. The first year, I walked in pain. My left ankle hurt me horribly. My right one, not so bad. 
to bed. I walked in pain, but I was still praising God every day because I was walking. I was walking when they said I wouldn't walk. And I would have people pray that I knew that I thought thought were living godly. But I, I, I would stand on that word. And at that time, I didn't know all these verses. I read the Bible, but I didn't study and, and get in there with it. But I clung to that one verse, Isaiah 53, 5. And I'm walking. And after a year of me just come, not saying, oh, I hurt. I hurt all oh, the pain. No, no, no. I was thanking the Lord every day that I'm able to walk. He and his mercy and, and me standing on the word that cannot fail, the word of God. I was walking and I was thankful. And then after the year mark, all of a sudden the pain left. That's the power of Jesus Christ. That's what he has done for us. I have two children. I lost several. They said I'd never have any children. Never could find anything wrong with me. I understand now it was a curse. But the thing is, God is faithful. I stood on his word. I pulled up scriptures. I stood on them. I would not be swayed. I have two children, and they still don't know how I was able to have them. Jesus Christ. So don't let anybody, don't let anybody sway you from serving Jesus Christ and knowing the power that lies within his name. Every word of God, every word is true in the word of God. Because we have to realize it says Jesus Christ is the, came in the flesh. He is a, the word made into flesh. Jesus the word is forever settled in heaven. With all the different translations. And all the things they're doing to the Bible. It all comes down to this. The pure unadulterated word of God. Jesus Christ is in heaven. And he will ensure when you call upon his name. And you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to the truth of the word of God. You're going to get it from him. You're going to get it from him, not from all man's study notes, not which they're not bad. Study notes can help, but you got to let Holy Spirit, you got to let Jesus Christ lead you to the truth. The truth. We have many promises. And I just want to remind all we're to pray for one another and we are to come in agreement. You know, I pray for people, Lord. You know, all over this world, Father God, in Jesus' name, your children that are truly yours, that are praying for your will to be done, that are lining up with your will, I come in agreement with them, Lord. I come in agreement with them, Father, so that where two or three are gathered together, there you will be in the midst. Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. Financial healing, spiritual healing, physical healing, nation healing. Until you get a point to where God says enough. Alright. With that being said. I just wanted to encourage you. Today. Many blessings and promises from God. But on the flip side. If you're disobedient. You've opened yourself up for attack. If the Lord's trying to speak to you. And you push it back. My recommendation. And, I, and everything I'm saying. You take to the Lord Jesus in prayer. Is push back what everybody else is telling you. Even people, well-meaning friends, people you've loved, people you've known for years, you know, people, people just you trust on TV, like, like the evangelists, whoever, push them back long enough, get down on your face and say, Jesus, tell me the truth. What is the truth in these things? Is there anything in my life that's off? Teach me, Lord. Keep me ever teachable. If I've learned something wrong, erase it and teach me the truth. And I'm asking you to do that in, for Jesus Christ, Son of God, to teach you the truth. For one example, there's so many opinions of pre-rapture, rapture, post-rapture. Post Why argue about it? Here's what I say. If Jesus is coming as he says, he's going to come when he comes. We're not to argue and contend over the word. We're to seek ye first the kingdom of God. We are to put Jesus first. You need to lay down 
all your entanglements with this world. So many of your of, of my brothers and sisters in Jesus are putting down roots in in this world. I've had people before I've talked to. And I mentioned this was a few years back. And I'm ready for Jesus to come. And this person said, not yet. My daughter's not saved. We can't be like that. We have to pray for their salvation. Trust the Lord. And whether they make it then or not, we have to trust that if they don't make it before he comes, that they will come regardless. Acts 16.31 They will come. They will come. Your seed is promised if you're righteous. All right. I'm going to get off here. But before I do, for those of you that would like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I invite you to know him now. And I know there's a, there's even people that people there will be people that has something negative to say about everything. Brush it off. You'd be obedient to Jesus Christ, not man, not man. You say this little prayer with me. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you came, born of a virgin. I believe you walked this earth as both God and man. You were whipped and beat for me. And you died on the cross, giving your life for me. And I believe you rose victorious three days later. And I believe you are the Son of God who came in flesh. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. And it's that simple. And he is faithful. So if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please contact me. It's pray.856myjesus.com. If you have questions, I would recommend first thing, get you a hard, hard copy Bible. Um, this is, oh, lost my cover. Get you a Bible. It's good to have a, a hard copy. Some people... Don't believe them right in their Bibles. Mine has notes everywhere. Uh, this is a new one. So I it hadn't, got, hadn't got there yet. Praise God. But seriously, because you never know if electronics might fail. Your phone might you know, go on the fritz. Whatever. I recommend a hard copy, but pray about that too. And then I would recommend if you've never, never heard it. Excuse me. Never known about Jesus. Start with John 3. I mean, John. Yeah, John 3. Or the whole book of John. The whole book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And learn more about intimately about your Savior, Jesus. He's a love like no other. If you have questions, I will get to them as soon as I can that come through the email. And um, He is faithful in all things. But I do recommend you pray and ask Jesus to lead you to people like-minded. In other words, people that are on fire, that are seeking Jesus above all else, not entwined with man-made doctrine that's going to sit and argue back and forth. That's why you ask Jesus. You pray about everything. Everything. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. So it's not always going to be the way you think it's going to be, just so you know. You will be persecuted, but you will not be alone. Whereas if you're still out in the world, you're still going to be persecuted, but you're standing alone. All right. <laughs> I'm rambling. With that being said, I'm going to get off here. Know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus loves you. I love you. And I want to say for well, thank you to all the the cards and the donations and the emails and we have we have gathered quite a few Bibles. Thank God. Praise God. We've been feeding the hungry, the homeless here. Um, normally we do that once or twice a week when the money comes in. So I thank everybody for making that possible. I have not taken any videos or anything like that because of their respecting their privacy but 
It's a joy to do that. It's a joy. Again, for those of you that may not have heard, right now the Facebook, Telegram, and the Jump will be taken down too. Um, there's some issues. I'm still having issues just getting logged in to be able to do that. Because of the Lord has told me to do it. Jesus has told me to do it. And I'm doing it because of um, the enemy within is what I'm going to say. Know that I love you all. It's nothing. I, I love being able to be on there and to hear from the people. But I have to be obedient. And I'm focusing. I'm, I'm, I'm moving everything aside where I can focus. Because there's so many dreams and visions and things that I've, I've had and I'm having. I have not had time to even share with everything else. So I'm laying it before the Lord and asking him, what does he want me to share? All right, so I ask you to continue prayers for us, your godly prayers. I don't need any more satanic prayers. I'm getting enough of them, but I'm canceling them in Jesus' name, just so you'll know. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, so the Lord. We do all things through Jesus Christ. All right, from Tennessee, God bless. We'll see you later.